The name of our project is Star Water Energy Crop Analysis for Optimal Land Management and Irrigation. Team members are Jackson Greer, Robert Swanson, and Kelsey Herrick. Our advisor for this project is Dr. Dana Porter, and our project manager is Professor Greg Stark. The location of our project is on a 100-acre tract in Aguilar's, Texas, and our client is Bill Rainey, the president and treasurer of South Texas Advancement Resource. This area of South Texas is traditionally very underutilized for agricultural production. This is due to mainly the harsh weather conditions, poor soil quality, and lack of access to usable water. Our task was to develop a replicable model for sustainable agriculture on the 100 acres. We needed to select suitable crops and determine the best method of irrigation for the area. Our model also needed to provide a positive rate of return in five years. Our client requested that we provide a report with design drawings, which would include the number of test plots proposed, irrigation method, number of water wells needed, and the water treatment technology to be used. Also, we needed to provide a capital cost estimation and a notational business plan over three to five years. Main constraint for our project was the lack of water availability. So water is only available through the wells that produce a maximum of 30 gallons per minute. And they also, uh, the water has high salt content. So this water, low water availability and poor water quality causes a high in initial investment and a very high energy cost. We also had no access to electricity grid um, and also the uh, project is in a harsh environment so um, these harsh high summer temperatures can reduce uh, overall yields. For a design approach the first uh, goal was to get as much water as we could from the area as possible. There's a stock tank on the property um, which was the only existing water source however that was not a reliable water source because it did not um, recurrently fill. Additionally, uh, we had to get uh, additional capacity from wells to supplement that um, stock tank. Then we decided to select a, cop, a crop with low water demand, high heat and salt tolerance, and then possible and like also have a possible market within the area. Then we just we had to size our field. Um, there's not enough water for the whole hundred acres, so we had to determine how much uh, water was going to uh, uh, water a certain amount of area. And then we had to uh, determine our irrigation efficiency. So we went with an SDI system, which was high um, water delivery efficiency. And then also we wanted to be able to scale our project. Um, in our design process, we started with a 70 acre center pivot irrigation uh, because the, those pivot systems are very common in the area and very common across Texas. Um, but we quickly found that they require much more water and much more energy than subsurface drip irrigation systems. And they're also um, uh, a lot less efficient than uh, SDI systems. We also considered a couple emerging technologies such as liquid nanoclay and bounty gel P. Um, these are both soil treatments that can increase water holding, which could reduce water usage by 50 to 65%. Um, these are very new technologies, so we wouldn't recommend them for the project right now, but maybe in the future. Um, our proposed final design is 42 acres um, of a rotation of cotton and alfalfa under a deficit irrigation plan with an SDI irrigation system. Um, there will also be eight high tunnels for vegetable production and the remaining 20 acres will have non-irrigated hay. Um, the water must be filtered using a reverse osmosis system to bring the total dissolved solids in the water to an acceptable level um, because they come out of gr the ground at a very high level. For the 42 acres, we chose to select a rotation of cotton and alfalfa. Cotton will be grown for two years and alfalfa every third. Both crops have shown to do well with subsurface drip irrigation. Rotating cotton and alfalfa will help maintain soil productivity and reduce pests and diseases. We chose spinach, peppers, tomatoes, and cucumbers as crops to be grown in eight high tunnels because they are known to perform well in a high tunnel environment. 
Our design consists of eight 20 by 96 high tunnels and they will be equipped with a rainwater catchment system. Shade cloths during the summer months will be utilized inside the high tunnels to protect the plants and reduce water needs. The crops inside the high tunnels will be irrigated using a surface drip irrigation system. The subsurface drip irrigation system, the water and fertilizer are delivered directly to the crop root zone. So this eliminates any runoff, evaporation and drip. Uh, this also makes it 25 to 40% more efficient than center pivots. Uh, their lifespan is beyond 25 years. And for uh, environmental concerns, there's no nutrient runoff, so that wasn't something we had to worry about. And also, they're very flexible, so we can make them fit any shape and feel. For our reverse osmosis system, um, we chose a system that can produce 80,000 gallons per day with a 60% recovery rate, which means that for every um, three gallons of water that we can use on the field, there are two gallons of water um, that will be wasted. These reverse osmosis systems uh, can be very expensive, but they are very, very necessary with poor water quality. We decided to add um, a water storage system of four 100,000 gallon water tanks. So this is more economical than a larger RO system because the RO system we picked would not meet the demand of our field. So this will allow us to meet the peak irrigation demand while also keeping initial investment costs down. Um, since we're off the grid, there's no access to electricity, which means we had to generate our own electricity Solar, wind, solar and wind energy are very expensive alternatives. Um, um, ranchers understand diesel engines and they know how to maintain and repair them, so that was a plus. Our estimated power usage is about uh, 50 kilowatts to run the whole system. So that's 5.6 kilowatts for each of the six wells, and then 10 mm -hmm. kilowatts for the RO system. Um, and then our SDI system would have a very low power requirement. Um, this is a basic overview of the initial costs for both the subsurface drip irrigation system and the high tunnel system. Um, the, the SDI system totals to around $430,000 and the high tunnel system totals to around $50,000. Um, these are uh, estimates of how much money could be um, brought in from the crops that would be grown um, on these fields. Um, as you can see, the high tunnel crops could revenue around $25,000 over five years. Um, and the cotton and alfalfa could do around $70,000 per year. Um, with the high initial costs, um, we do not recommend this plan because um, it would be very difficult to make money.